Under One Roof MTL, hosted by Robin Flynn, featuring mortgage brokers Fred and Martin and real estate expert LJ Aguinaga. Presented by Fred and Martin Mortgages and LJ Realties. Good afternoon. It's 12.06. You're listening to Under One Roof MTL on CJD 800. Here we demystify home ownership one episode at a time. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We're with you until 1 p.m. I'm with Fred Pichette and Martin Spalding of Fred and Martin Mortgages. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Hey, Robin. And of course, LJ Aguinaga from LJ Realties. What's up, LJ? How you doing? Pretty good. Let's start with our trivia question of the week, because the best thing to do is win cookies give people the chance to win cookies. It's all about the cookies. All about the cookies. <laughs> so, of course, our trivia question is brought to you by Felix and Norton. You can visit their store at the Blue Haven Shopping Center, 3705 St. John's Boulevard in DDO. If you're the first person to text in the correct response with your first name to 514-800, you will receive delicious Felix and Norton cookies delivered straight to your door. The question this week, in Montreal... What is the term used for traditional row houses with shared walls between units? We will accept either the French or English term. Again, 514-800, if you think you know it. In Montreal, what is the term for the traditional row houses with shared walls between units? 514-800, if you think that you know it. Well, guys, this week I was very sad. The Bank of Canada did not drop interest rates. I know you guys said that they wouldn't, but part of me still kind of hoped they might surprise us and maybe drop it like a quarter point. I don't know. Were you really surprised that the rates didn't go down? Not surprised, but sad. Yeah. So, she was hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> hopeful. You know, you've heard the expression, hope is a terrible strategy, right? Mm-hmm. I know. She saw a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. And there just... is a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. So you're saying there's a chance. Well, no. So <laughs> what I'm saying is, is funny because I posted the announcement and and then I got a series of questions on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So I committed myself. So I said, I think, and this, I didn't share this with the group, I think that we're going to see a reduction of 75 basis points by December 31st of this year. Okay. That's So if you guys want to write that, that down, okay. <laughs> I think we're going to go down by 75 basis points. It's not the end of the world. We're not going to drop to the twos that we saw during COVID. But we're going in the right direction. And as you know, when the Bank of Canada lowers its rate, everything, it has a domino effect. So not only on your variable, but if you're renewing your mortgage, you're going to renew at a lower rate. It has an impact on anything that you're paying interest on. I would say that my what's your, what's money you, what? is on 50 basis points really? before the end of the year. Do you want to put some money on that? I'd love to. All right. I, are we allowed to gamble on the air? <laughs> I'll put 20 bucks on it. You'll put 20? Yeah. Okay, I, uh, I'll see your 20. Me, guys, I'm more hop- optimistic than oh! you. <laughs> Here we go. The I think it's going to go down by 1% by the end of the year. Oh. Oh. Because I, we, well, Fred, I knew I liked you. <laughs> I knew. You, know, you know why? We, we see this week again, uh, a lot of you know banks' um, mortgage default had increased by a lot, mm-hmm. which is that's not a good sign, you know? If you normally people will pay off their credit cards first, and then at the end, if they have a problem, they will default on their mortgage. But it seems to go up, which is, uh, I think people are struggling right now. Well, I think you're referring to, so there are two credit bureaus in Canada. There's TransUnion Mm -hmm. and there's Equifax. And Equifax actually released a report, and they were talking about um, a rise in defaults, both on the mortgage side and on the credit card side. Um, Very concerning. Um, because a lot of people, what they're doing is they're using credit to pay credit. Which is not a great strategy. But you could refinance your home and use the equity in your home to consolidate Look your debt, you. right? Look at you, Robin. <laughs> I'm learning. Oh. I'm learning. You guys are teaching me very, very well, right? And I, I've done this. I bought my house six years ago. And when our mortgage came up for renewal, we refinanced and paid off our credit card debt. And, and it was what, wonderful. What I want to highlight here is that you had the opportunity to do this because you invested in an asset. You yep. bought a home. You took the first step. Which, even when the going got a bit tough along the way, you accumulated some credit card debt, potentially line of credits, you had access to equity that was untouched in your home, that again, we re-amortize either over 25 or 30 years, get to pay down those higher interest uh, rate credit cards, like Martin will tell you, that gets charged daily, adding mm-hmm. up compared to your mortgage, which is semi-annually. Well, because actually, it's funny, what, you know, Fred and I have been actually talking to a lot of clients, and we've been using the government of Canada... Um, 
It's called the credit card or the interest calculator. Okay. All right. And so what it does is that it, it, if you're only making your down payment, uh, your minimum Minim payments on a monthly basis, it basically tells you how long will it take mm. you to pay off your credit card forever, and it'll bowl <laughs> yeah. you over, you know, uh -uh. And, and, not, and not large amounts and because it compounds. You, you know, the second you don't make your minimum payment or you don't pay off your credit card in full, the interest starts to compound on itself. So you're paying interest on interest on interest on interest, and it's and it it, 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 it was crazy, Martin. Result. Then we saw. Uh, for $20,000 of credit debt, it could take you up to 25 years to pay down that and, amount. It's and, crazy. It, and it's better now, right? Because the minimum payment went up. I remember when that happened a few a few years ago, the percentage of what your minimum payment had to be changed in Quebec, if I'm not mistaken. Didn't that happen? I believe that's correct. Am I, I'm yeah. going crazy? No, okay. I, <laughs> I remember getting a letter in the mail yes. from MBNA. Listen, now we're learning from Robin. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a very humbling show today. I remember she, getting that letter as well. But she, yeah, at the time, I had a lot of credit card debt. So knowing when my minimum payments went up, it was very stressful. Yeah. And, and it was right at the beginning of the pandemic. And it was it was a rough time. So do we want to unpack what it is to refinance? Oh, of course. Of All course. right. So if you're in that situation where... You know, on average, uh, most people's mortgage payments have gone up by if you've renewed or if you're on a variable rate. Basically, your mortgage payments have gone up by about 500 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. So what happens is it leaves you or even more. I, you know, this is radio, so you can't get you can't wave at me and let people know. So you have to I'm getting you the Okay, I'm giving you the car. Okay, so let's say it's $500. That means there's less money because you're paying down your mortgage. There's less money to pay off other bills. Yep. So if you find yourself in a situation where you bought an asset, you've got a home, you can use part of the equity in that home to refinance. And what refinance allows you to do is to basically reset your debts. So you refinance, you obviously put more money on your mortgage. You can also amortize it over a longer period of time, which will lower your monthly payments, which will improve your cash flow. And with a good lender, you've got prepayment privileges on a monthly, yearly basis. So if you've got some extra money because you paid off your credit, your high interest credit card bills by refinancing, use that extra money to slam it against your mortgage. And Martin, I would say you will increase your credit rating as well. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they're actually, what's happening also is that you're seeing a people who are not even making their credit card payments. They're yep. defaulting on the credit card payments and 90 days are on a rise. That completely wipes out your credit rating. Guys, I'm the perfect example because I did exactly this a few years ago. I refinanced my home to pay down credit card debt. My credit score went up by almost 100 points. That's huge <laughs> that's a huge your credit increase score also has an impact on your your borrowing abilities yep and so you need to be conscious of all that because it's a slippery slope that you're on if you're not paying the minimum on your credit card or if you're defaulting on your credit card if you're defaulting on your mortgage try getting um another loan it's Another not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So you want to make sure you catch this before you go down this slippery slope like you're mentioning so that you have the opportunity to do the refinance to get yourself out of the difficult times. And what's we haven't even touched upon this. Obviously, your mortgage rate is, let's say, 5%, 5.5% compared to the 20 30% interest rate that you're paying on a credit card. And mm -hmm. how often does a mortgage compound on a yearly basis? Semi-annually. There you go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, look at that. You're listening to Under One Roof MTL on CJD 800. Before we go to traffic, LJ, let's do a quick real estate market up. Update. So the February statistics were just released, actually, and they were really exciting, to be honest. Um, total residential sales are up 40% on the island of Montreal compared to February 2023. I said 40%. You heard that right. Active listings are up 15%. This tells us that people who have been on the sidelines from a seller's perspective have realized that it's time to list. You know, people have understood where interest rates are at. The buyers are back out there. It's time to get on the market. Prices are up between 4 to 5%, depending on if it's a single-family home, condo, or multiplex. And the average days on market is down in all three categories for the first time in probably about a year and a half. Wow. So properties are trading. People are seeing the action. You're starting to see some of those multiple offer bids. But more than anything, we're seeing just excitement and action. Consumer confidence is back up. 
Is it me that I, I think I saw much more listening? Is that right, LG? Well, that's just it. The active listings were up 15% compared to February 2023. Oh, that's good. Wow. Great news. Uh, 1215 is the time here on CJD 800. You're listening to Under One Roof MTL. I'm Robin. That's Fred. That's Martin. That's LJ. Up next, how important is it to stage your home prior to putting it on the market? Under One Roof MTL, hosted by Robin Flynn, featuring mortgage brokers Fred and Martin and real estate expert LJ Aguinaga. Presented by Fred and Martin Martin. Mortgages and LJ Realties. This is your Lingo Lexicon on Under One Roof MTL. HELOC. A HELOC, or a Home Equity Line of Credit, is a revolving line of credit secured by the equity in a borrower's home, allowing them to borrow funds as needed. For example, a homeowner could use a HELOC to finance home renovations, drawing funds from the available equity in their property. To learn more about what the best options are for you, consult with your mortgage broker. This has been your Lingo Lexicon on Under One Roof MTL. And of course, the best mortgage brokers to consult with would be Fred and Martin. Uh, actually, Ian, I, <laughs> we've got Joanne here, but we really should talk about HELOCs because uh, Fred's not a big fan of HELOCs. He'll tell you why. <laughs> oh well quickly before we get to joanne okay. no it's just because a heloc it's like having a haiti ham at home you know yes and if you can't really control yourself and mm. you you know you like to spend i don't think it's the right product for you but if you're very a very good discipline and you could use that heloc to like purchase another property that could be a great tool as soon as you said it's like an atm in your home i was like ooh. Wow. so i should not have a it, it's just not for <laughs> everyone not you know <laughs> Yeah, I guess you, what you're doing is you're pulling equity out of your house. Like mm -hmm. it's an ATM. So you go into your kitchen, put your card in, and all of a sudden you've got a thousand bucks. But it's a thousand bucks of equity that was in your house that you're spending freely. Yep. And what happens? What what kind of interest are you paying on a HELOC? Daily compound. That's interest. right. There we go. Oh. Expensive interest. Expensive. And it's prime plus usually 0.5, which is a higher interest rate. Exactly. Especially no at the moment. Fun. No fun. You're listening to Under One Roof MTL on CJD 800. It's hard to imagine what your future can look like when you're viewing a property if the walls are painted a harsh color. If you're going to see a house and the walls are fluorescent fuchsia or there's a red bedroom and that's not your thing, it may be hard to picture what your life could look like living there. That's where home staging comes in. It's an often overlooked but important part of the buying and selling process. And here to fill us in on the details is Joanne Vroom, president at Unique Home Solutions. Hey, Joanne, thanks for being here. Hey, hey Robin, nice to be here. Thanks. So can, let's start by just explaining what home staging is and what the benefits are. Well, home staging is putting your home on the real estate market and preparing it so that your home appeals to the largest or, or the most amount of uh, buyers, potential buyers. So we want to have our, our buyers fall in love with our property the moment they walk through the door, which also means that whatever you see online, you should actually see that in the house when you come to visit. So you want to stage the property before you take your pictures then? Yes. Okay. 100%. Excellent. Uh, Martin? Because uh, I, I always have home staging in my mind where we're basically taking an empty house, we're putting furniture in it. But is home staging more than that? Are there minor repairs, minor upgrades that we should make before we list the house? Well, if your home is completely empty and you've lived there, I highly recommend having a consultation. And during that consultation, even though the home is empty, there's things that the buyer is going to see. So for instance, it could be, you know, dirty grout, it could be moldy caulking, it, um, you know, there, there's, there are cheap repairs, or it could be, let's say, painting. You, you want to make sure that your walls are fairly neutral, because most people can accept more neutral walls. And let's say if you have bright fuchsia as Robin mentioned <laughs> it's people say well I don't know if I can live with this and then the next thing you know they're thinking about having to spend money before they move in to paint those walls so your services run the whole gamut so you'll go in you'll look at a house if there's a tur turquoise room or a fuchsia room you'll say listen let's put that in a gray or uh, in, a, yes. in a in a white uh, the floors are horrible maybe a quick sanding job and then do you bring in the furniture so it looks like it's a house that's lived in so you can have i'm thinking of putting a king size bed in this room with a king size bed i know you can measure but it's much easier to visualize if there's a king size bed and actually in that room 
Yes. Um, so if the property is completely empty, then we do a walkthrough. Um, I can see right away what's going to fit. Okay. Um, but I'm also going to keep in mind the flow. For instance, the way the furniture is sitting in each room. Um, I want to make sure there's a minimum of two feet walking space, let's say, between a coffee table um, and a sofa. I want to make sure we can access all the doors. So I'm not going to put furniture or plants in front of a patio door where they somebody can't walk by and uh, and see it makes sense lj so my question right now is a lot of the time when i'm working with clients people will bring up the idea of home staging and the first question i always get is how much does it cost so i know that there's a lot of facets to it can you break some of those down for us please so if you're living in the home it's going to start at three hundred dollars plus tax for up to two hours so during that time i will walk with the homeowners or I don't even mind if the realtor's uh, present. Um, I'll do what I can during those two hours to give you suggestions or help you to fix up your, your home. Um, if it's completely empty, it'll start around 2900 plus tax for the first month. Um, the first month is always higher because it involves all the work that we put into it. After the first month, there's the option to renew for just furniture rental, which might be $1,800, $1,900 a month. And sometimes we do three-month packages. But one of the things is you, let's say if you're comparing prices between different companies, staging for us is like if I'm staging your family room, I want to see a sofa, I want to see two chairs, or I want to aim for a minimum of about five people for your family room. So staging for me is not putting two chairs and a little rug, and that's called staging. It's the entire package. It's the rug. It's the lighting. It's the art. It's, you know, the seating is super important. Um, you know, even in a dining room, if you put six chairs, great. But if you put four chairs, people are going to look online and they're going to say, well, that's a small dining room. There's mm. only four chairs. You really want to make sure that people can visualize themselves in the space and how they're going to be living in it, it sounds like. Yes. Yes, so very I, much. I've got a question for LJ. When a house has been staged, does it make it easier for you to sell or easier for you to show? Definitely. So a lot of clients don't have the imagination to understand what the possibility is. And I think those probably segue into our next topic, which is the virtual staging versus real staging. Mm -hmm. And people like you'd mentioned, Joanne, is they'll see one thing online, they see certain photos, and then they get in and they almost are unsure. They say, okay, well, does that fit? Does it not fit? And when you're there in person actually trying to make a decision, at times you're unsure at this point. So it's a great first part. But how do you feel about that? Well, I have to say virtual staging has gotten a lot better over the years. Years ago, I mean, the the decor in the pictures was really bad. But <laughs> now you have to look twice. The only thing I'm running into now, of course, you know, it's taken a lot of our business, but our business has changed. So what I'm hearing now is that uh, people that have virtually staged their properties are coming back and saying, you know, pe people are walking through our house and they saw these nice photos online and they they said, what a rundown property. That was one of my recent ones. And I said, well, you know what? If it was going to be empty, you have to make sure that it was cleaned up too because what they're doing is they're whiting out all the junk in the house and they're putting a nice photo mm. over top. So people are not only getting the shock of the, the house is empty, but they're it's full of junk. So it's a bit of a bait and switch kind okay. of thing. It's, it's crazy. I, I couldn't believe it myself. So, um, you know, but it's, I always say there was one realtor who was taking pictures and I was moving items around and he was taking pictures when I was doing it. I said, why are you doing that? He said, because when you leave, I'm going to put it all back. And I said, but you have to leave it the way it's photographed because we're going to be moving so many things out, around and that's what people are going to want to see mm -hmm. not the way it was yep so makes a lot of sense that's joanne room unique home solutions how can people get in touch with you joanne well um i don't mind giving my phone number perfect uh, online or, or it's 514-222-5553 or you can find me on instagram unique home solutions.ca and just mess message me that's how i found you was on <laughs> instagram beautiful photos can i ask Thank one more you. question uh, very quickly, Martin. Okay, I walk into the house. I love what you've done. Can I buy the furniture from you? Yes, 
We you have can. walked away. The developers have been buying our furniture. Um, homeowners, um, one homeowner bought everything, and he sold it furnished. Perfect. Wow. That's so, incredible. That's good. Very, go. very, very cool. Under One Roof MTL, hosted by Robin Flynn, featuring mortgage brokers Fred and Martin and real estate expert LJ Aguinaga. Presented by Fred and Martin Mortgages and LJ Realties. This is the Mortgage Minute. The Mechanics of Mortgage Refinancing for Debt Consolidation. This is your Mortgage Minute. Debt consolidation for mortgage refinancing is a strategic financial move that uses the equity in your home to consolidate various high-interest debts such as credit cards, personal lines of credit, into a mortgage with a lower interest rate. It's an opportunity for you to reset your debt. This approach not only simplifies your financial management by consolidating multiple debt payments into a single, more manageable monthly mortgage payment, but also offers potential for significant savings on interest costs over time. By leveraging your home's equity, this method aims to lower your monthly expenses, improve your cash flow, and alleviate financial stress, guiding you towards a more financially secure future. Opting for debt consolidation through refinancing can be a savvy way to make your home equity work for you, turning an otherwise complex and stressful financial situation into an opportunity for savings. You're listening to Under One Roof MTL on CJD 800. I'm Robin Flynn with Fred Pichette and Martin Spalding from Fred and Martin Mortgages and LJ Aguinaga from LJ Realties. Um, Guys, interest rates, I mentioned it before the news and right away, as soon as we went to news, we were like, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. Yes, yes, we're going to get to all of this. Interest rates, uh, you could potentially use them as a deduction on your taxes, but not for everybody, right? Exactly. So I was actually just doing my tax returns this morning and as I'm filing it for my revenue properties, and this is a huge kicker, revenue properties, or if you live in a duplex or triplex and you occupy one of the units, you can obviously take a percentage of the interest, but you can deduct the interest expense on any revenue producing property when you do your taxes. So that is the only silver lining. You're going to be able to use it to offset your taxes this year, especially if you're in a higher income tax bracket. It could help you, especially on some of these variable programs that you actually have a much larger interest expense than you actually physically paid because the payments did not get adjusted. So take a look at that when you're doing your taxes this year to benefit from some benefits, a strong word, but to take advantage of the deduction that you have available to you. Well, it makes sense because any business you declare your expenses and higher interest rates are an expense for your business if you own a revenue property, right? Exactly. And because we can't even use it to increase the rents or revenue, the TAL isn't considering that. You have to take where we can the the use of it, right? That makes a lot of sense. I know it's different in the U.S. though, right, Martin? You were mentioning that. Yeah, no, I was reading uh, the T's as we called it. Mm-hmm. And we just got to be careful that uh, interest on your principal residence in the United States is tax deductible, where wow. it's not tax deductible here in Canada. Interesting. I wonder why that is. I, I don't know if anyone actually knows the answer to that, but I'm curious. Tax law. There's okay. also differences, right? Because right now in Canada, your principal residence will not pay capital gains tax at all. Whereas in the U.S., there are limits on the capital gains shelter, right? So they save on one end, could potentially get hit on the other. It's just a different way of uh, accounting. It's, one's not better than the other, basically. I, I would take the deduction. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That makes sense. Man's always waiting for you somewhere. <laughs> um, so when you're purchasing a property, we know that with interest rates, they went up in the last couple of years. And it, the, the goal of that was to cool the housing market and to slow inflation. Um, but basically, people stopped buying homes because... Uh, well, not altogether, but because interest rates were so high. But your interest rate shouldn't be the only variable in your decision when you're doing things like purchasing a property, uh, purchasing a rental property, um, or even just refinancing your home, right? What else should we be looking at besides the interest rate? Well, I could tell you, uh, Robin, that people focusing a lot on interest rate when they should focus on the loan and condition of the lender. Okay. Uh, number one, um, I got to say, uh, the, uh, I hear a lot of people say, oh, I got a great rate of 2%. They're very happy. But I never hear anyone uh, saying that, oh, I'm so happy I pay a penalty of $10,000 because mm-hmm. I break my mortgage, which is that something people ask to look at those details. Um, sadly, pretty sure in a lifetime, you will have to pay a penalty. Why? Because if you're breaking your mortgage, 
penalty uh, banks applying the penalty penalty is the biggest complaint in the mortgage industry which is that something that yes an interest a good interest rate is important to make you save some money but better than that uh, make sure uh, you're signing with a good mortgage lender that makes a lot of sense. If you have questions, by the way, 514-800 to text in 514-790-0800 if you want to call in. Martin, did you want to add something to that? Yeah, because a lot of people look at, you know, they'll look at five or 10 basis points lower. Uh, and then I agree 100% with Fred is that you may have short-term savings, nominal short-term savings, but God forbid you have to break your mortgage. That's when they're going to get you. So read the conditions, read the fine print. Choose a good lender that have good conditions, a good customer service, good user portal. Um, there's so much more than just the interest rate. I love a good user portal. I love my user portal for my mortgage. It's lovely. I've got this nice little graph. Anyway, uh, LJ, were you going to add something as well? I was going to say exactly that. It's the a lot of time we do have clients who focus on the rate specifically, and while rate is one aspect of it, if you're going to end up getting hit on the back end with penalty. And I've seen penalties of thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, right? Wow. On certain properties, on investment things, especially when there's a large rate differential with where we're at in the market. Mm -hmm. um, you, you didn't save anything at all, right? So unless you're really happy with that bet of, I'm going to hold this property to term and there's absolutely nothing that can change that, you have to be careful. And I have to add to that, LJ, it's uh, most of people when they refine their property, yes, some of them is to pay debts, but some of them is to pull out equity to purchase another property. And when they find out that to do that, it might cost them $10,000 or more, um, they're not too happy about it, you know, and it blocking them to potentially get the equity out, get the down payment to purchase the second property. Like it's, it's very important to look at the details when you uh, sign for a mortgage. Also do the math because five or 10 basis points can be 10, 15, depending on the size of the mortgage, can be 10, 15 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. So if you multiply that by 12, by five, if it's a five year term, then you know how much you're saving, and then you can ask, what would my penalty be if I broke my mortgage in two and a half years? And then the math will tell you, is this a good move or is this a bad move? The math ain't mathin', as the kids say exactly. on TikTok. Exactly, it's black on white. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question from Noel in St. Laurent, so I want to get to it before we go to traffic. He said It's a question about a HELOC. He said, regarding a HELOC, how is the equity value calculated? For example, I bought a brand new condo in 2020, purchased pre-construction in 2018. When I took delivery in 2020, the bank evaluated the condo at 70 k more than what I paid. Two years later, I received the city valuation at 200 k over what I paid. So how is the equity calculated and by whom? LJ? So the bank's always going to send in an appraiser to value the property, and they're going to lend on that. So they'll give a maximum loan to value, but based on the appraisal that was prepared by a certified evaluator. And how does that appraiser make his decision? Is it Do they look at the city valuation at all? No. So they're really focusing on sold comparables. So okay. what properties have sold in the area that have similar characteristics? They'll do adjustments if there's more bedrooms, less bedrooms, uh, parking, um, exposure to different light, stuff of that nature. If it's a revenue property, we can also do a revenue approach. So what is the revenue compared to other properties that have been receiving? We can apply a cap rate to that. And then um, there's also a cost approach that will sometimes be used is what's the cost to rebuild this property. So they're looking at three different things, but most commonly it is the sold comparable method for all things residential. Absolutely. And I could add to that that if you want a HELOC, you need to have at least 80% of equity. Well, you could go up to 80% of equity, meaning if you have, uh, let's say, 75% uh, loan to value, you might not have enough equity to set up a line of credit. It's not going to be really worth it. Under One Roof MTL, hosted by Robin Flynn, featuring mortgage brokers Fred and Martin and real estate expert LJ Aguinaga. Presented by Fred and Martin Mortgages and LJ Realties. This is Under One Roof MTL on CJD 800 with Fred and Martin and LJ. I'm Robin, and we're with you until 1 p.m. Time flies when you're having fun. It always <laughs> seems to fly when I'm in the room with you guys. And as you saw, I'm learning things. And we are going to recap some of the stuff that we learned this week. But first, let's get to our property of the week because I love seeing the properties that LJ picks every week because there's usually a tasty treat involved. <laughs> so this week's real estate feature is an exceptional five-bedroom home in Lacey Green, Kirkland. This home is flooded with natural light, which creates a warm and inviting atmosphere all day long. It's a home that was built by a renowned developer who actually built the home for himself and his family. 
This residence exudes quality and attention to detail at every turn. The current sellers are the sole owners, and it's been meticulously maintained and showcases an impressive build that stands the test of time. It's so meticulous that people are asking us if people are actually still living in the home. It's really impressive. Oh, wow. Now, located in the heart of Kirkland, enjoy the convenience of nearby amenities. You're just a short drive away from all of my favorite restaurants, including La Pearl, a local Szechuan favorite. I grew up on their peanut butter dumplings and the sesame beef, which is what dreams are made of. Don't miss your chance to own this remarkable home where every detail reflects elegance and sophistication. We're asking $1.295 million. And what's the address again, LG? The address is 2 Edison. All right. Awesome. And you, of course, you can see the pictures online if you go to LJ Realties. Yeah, it's immaculate, the house. Well, I'm asking I, if people I just, still live there. I just went there. to look it up because uh, it just seems, look, it looks like a really sweet property. Corner lot, uh, oh, incredible I think property. I think it's going to go quick. Yeah. That's amazing. We're excited. And I'm a big fan of the Pearl. It's like a, an institution it's in an the institution. West Island, right? Whether it's their lunch menu or their dinner, the, the all you can eat that you order to the table. Those peanut butter dumplings. I've literally gone to the West Island just for the peanut butter dumplings ever since oh, we wow. downtown. <laughs> yeah. uh, speaking of tasty treats, uh, let's give the answer to our trivia question of the week brought to you by Felix and Norton Cookies. You can visit their store at the Blue Haven Shopping Center, 3705 St. John's Boulevard in DDO. The first person to text in the correct response to 514-800 was Diane in Paincourt. In Montreal, what is the term for the traditional houses shared with uh, with shared walls between units? The answer is townhouses. We would have also accepted Maison en Rangée. Thank you to everybody who participated. If you didn't win, you can try again next week. We have new trivia questions for you every Sunday. Um, guys, what did we learn this week? I learned that home staging can be helpful for selling your property. I also learned that interest on revenue properties is tax deductible, but not the interest on your primary residence. Um, and that refinancing your mortgage to consolidate your debts could save you a lot of money. Is that a reasonable recap of what well, we learned? That's a pretty good recap. Yeah? Okay. Uh, I, I take I good the, notes. The, well, the home staging is, is, you know, in my mind, home staging was putting furniture in an empty house. Mm. And you see that Joanne goes a lot further than that. So if you've got a fuchsia turquoise wall, she's going to recommend to put that into neutrals. And then, LJ, your comment that it really is very helpful to sell a property when someone can walk into a room, and even if they can measure... But to have a king size bed, they can really visualize: Will my king size bed fit in here, and how much room will I have around the bed to get in and out of the house? One thing that, in and out of the room. One Sorry. thing that Joanne even offers, we were talking about it off air, is just decluttering and organizing before you list your property. So if you're still going to be living there when you're showing the property, but you just want to downsize your items, your belongings, she can come in and help you do that. And that's super important because I've had clients who wanted to list a property, and it's literally been a year, and we haven't been able to go to market yet because they're still decluttering. And it's really, it's getting the monkey off their back. It can be very difficult, very emotional process. Mm -hmm. And if you have the help of somebody, it could really just alleviate some of the stress and the pain that you're going through in order to make this, um, get us to the next step, obviously, in the next chapter. Yeah, what's that expression? If you haven't opened that box in a year, get rid of the box. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Marie Kondo. I went crazy for that series when it first hit Netflix, where she, if it doesn't spark joy, get rid of it. Or one of the tricks that um, my mom used to use was she would hang things in her closet with the hanger backwards. And if a year later the hanger was still backwards, she got rid of it because it meant she hadn't opened it or used it. Because it's not coming in a back year. into style. You're not going to wear it. Again. Or it, it doesn't fit and it's not going to fit. <laughs> <laughs> and don't, don't, and we, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, don't send your stuff to storage. That's a money yeah. pit. Yeah. yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. My, my mom was also really big in, on every year. It was garbage bags, declutter, get rid of it. And even to the point where sometimes I'd leave for a vacation or, or go visit somebody and I get back and things are like, where was this? She's like, well, I don't know. I haven't seen it knowing full well she's gotten rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm like that. I have like no emotional attachment whatsoever to items. And I'm like, if we find out we need it, we'll buy it again. Like, I'm like, whatever. I get rid of it. Donate. I'm a big fan of donating and getting of rid of stuff. But my husband's the opposite. My husband's like, what if one day I wear size medium again? And he wants to hang on to that ratty old band t-shirt. Um, guys, <laughs> we have a really cool event coming up. Um, in... Oh, we're going to talk about the event. Are we going to talk? I thought we wanted to talk about the event. Well, we have time, so let's okay, talk about so the let's event. Okay, so let's talk about the event. Let's talk about the event. So we've decided uh, to hold an event every quarter. Uh, our first event will be on April 25th, Thursday, from 6 to 8 p.m. Tickets are available on Eventbrite. It's up already, and people have actually already started. We've just talked about it, like, off the cuff a couple of weeks ago. 
uh, and people are already starting to take tickets or are already starting to download tickets. What we're going to focus in on, we're going to be there to answer all your questions. The whole team will be there. Uh, but our first event will be really focused in on first time home buyers. So our presentation will talk about what first time home buyers should prepare for in, in terms of down payment, welcome taxes, all that stuff. But at the same time, everybody's welcome um, because we're going to be there to answer all your questions. And I think to add on that, even if you're not a first time buyer yourself, but you potentially want to help a child, a family member, a friend, and you just want a quick refresher because you haven't purchased the property in 10, 15, 20 plus years, it's a good time to come down, get an understanding of how the market's working right now, how the full process actually works from start to finish, including closing costs, inspections, uh, the financing, the search itself. And then we have the Q&A at the end where we can answer any of your questions that you've been thinking about that you haven't sent a text message, haven't called in, but you have this lingering question we'd love to meet with you and go over it and also people could understand how mortgages works how the qualification works with because we get a lot of questions like people they don't really know how it works and i gotta say if you've never been through the mortgage process it's it could be hard to understand why i'm quali why i get qualified for 300 or 400 that's what we're going to answer. You're going to talk about the ratios. Of course. <laughs> and things have changed. Maybe you were a first-time home buyer 20, 25 years ago, but there was no first-time home buyer savings account back then. Things are different. So home buyer's plan. Exactly. So maybe your kid is looking to buy their first home, but you can't necessarily give them great advice because things are different now. So probably beneficial to attend this. It's like school for everybody. Whether you're buying a home or you already own a home, you're going to get answers to your questions. Plus, we're going to have great snacks. Yes. Oh, do you love and, snacks? And, and hopefully cookies from Felix and Norton? Oh, I think so. Well, now or we just put them on the, the spot. <laughs> <laughs> and it's free. And it's free. So go to Eventbrite. It's under Under One Roof MTL. Uh, we put a title of Demystifying Homeownership. That's a generic title. The first event will be focused in on first-time home buyers. Our offices are at the WeWork right across the street from the Bell Center on Avenue du Kennedy and Moyan. So access by, there's parking, there's metro, it's easy to get to after work, come and visit us. And um, and there's no we'll, game that night, right? And there's no game that night. So there, there won't be any of traffic. Of course not. <laughs> End of April. You think the Habs are making the playoffs with the way they've been there playing this season? There won't be any traffic issues. <laughs> or concerts. Uh, and we're looking forward to seeing you in person. Awesome. It'll be a lot of fun and it's free. The link to the event will be posted on the Under One Roof MTL Facebook page this afternoon. So if you want to go check it out, you can do that. Uh, guys, very, very quickly before we uh, wrap things up, reminder that you can hear us every Sunday at noon right here on CJD 800 after the trivia show. To learn more about us and the show, you can visit our website, underoneroofmtl.com. And if you have any questions for Fred Martin or LJ, you can send them to info at underoneroofmtl.com. LJ, where can people reach you if they want to get in touch? You can start with my website, ljrealties.com. You can also find me on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, and X. My handle is LJ Aguinaga. Or for more information on our listings and our real estate team under the handle LJ Realties, feel free to call or text me at 514-500-4040. And we're also currently looking for motivated realtors to join our team. So if you're looking for a change, please reach out. Awesome. Fred, Martin, where can people reach you? So we talked a lot about refinancing today. If you're considering refinancing, uh, fredmartin.com. Uh, all our information is there, fredmartin.com. Amazing. If you missed anything, you can listen to the show in its entirety on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. For LJ, Fred, and Martin, I'm Robin Flynn. This has been Under One Roof MTL.